I'm Stephanie with Vaudio, and today we have a quick how-to video about integrating hardware triggers like our step view mat, our auto view IR sensor, and our presenter pod system with our switchers like the AV Bridge Matrix Pro and AV Bridge Matrix Mix for automated control. So these are fantastic peripherals to add to the Matrix Mix or Matrix Pro because it allows you to have touch control around the room automated, say you step on a mat or walk under a sensor. You can have that execute a series of commands like setting a camera up for a preset, going through a transition, configuring your audio, uh, things like that. All at, you know, just stepping on something, pushing a button. So let's talk about setting that up. Um, that's gonna be two different steps. There's the hardware component and then there's programming the macros in the web UI. So for hardware, I've selected our presenter pod system because it's the one that has maybe the most features um, and the most ways that you can set it up. Uh, things like our step view mat are pretty simple. You step on them and and they create a contact closure for our triggers on the back of the Matrix Pro and Matrix Mix. As long as you're stepped on it, that trigger remains live. When you step off of it, it's done. Um, the auto view IR sensor is the same. Um, when you step underneath it, uh, it's triggered on. When you uh, move away from that cone, um, it triggers off and there's a way that you can change the shape of that cone, really. Um, the presenter pod has a couple of different things that are cool about it. Um, the presenter pod system itself comes with one presenter pod and the rack unit. The rack unit can support up to two presenter pods each, so you can purchase an additional pod to go with this. Um, you get four buttons on one pod, so together you would have eight buttons. Um, it's pretty simple to connect these up. It's just a single category cable. On the back of the presenter pod, we have a connector on the top or the back if you want to just put it to a wall and cable it up that way. And then um, to one of the two Cat5 pod ports on the back of the presenter pod system. Now, uh, I'm going to show you a picture of the back of the presenter pod system in a second, um, but let's talk about the buttons here. You'll see we have four buttons available. And then on the back of the presenter pod, we have an I.O. Uh, basically on a Phoenix connector that where each button corresponds to one of the uh, GPIO ports there, one of the connectors on the Phoenix connector. And then you've got two grounds. So the way that you wire this up is you select which trigger number you would like each button to be on your Matrix Mix or Matrix Pro. There are 10 available on either of those and you would run the button from the you would run the wire from your button from the back of the presenter pod system to the back of the trigger number that you would like to assign it to and then you would also connect the two grounds so a cabling system for one presenter pod could look a little bit like this now one other thing you may want to decide on for your presenter pod system is whether or not you want your buttons to be momentary or latching so momentary would be you press it once and it sends one contact closure to your AV Bridge Matrix Pro or AV Bridge Matrix Mix, whereas latching would be you press it and it is a constant trigger to your system until you let it go. Now there are dip switches on the back of the presenter pod interface where you can set this per button. So you can have button one be latching, button two be momentary, etc., etc. Now I prefer to have them all the same just so that you don't have to remember which ones are which. So now that we've taken care of our hardware connections, let's go to a system where these are all set up and start programming our macros. So now we're in the web UI of our AV Bridge Matrix Mix or AV Bridge Matrix Pro. We've done this by connecting our switcher to the network and finding the IP address on the front of the unit, then typing that into the address bar of any browser, Firefox, Chrome, Safari, you know, it'll work in anything. It's browser based, so no need to download or update anything. So we type in the IP address and this is about what it's going to look. If you have a Matrix Pro, your layout's gonna be just a little bit different, but it should look very similar. Now we are going to log in as an admin and go to control devices. So this is where we are able to program our macros. Macros we've already programmed are located up here at the top. Our macro editor is right below that. 
our execution log here, which will let us know how our presets are going, if we have any syntax errors, things like that are hanging out right over here. And then our trigger status along the bottom here lets us know if we have any active triggers. So for example, um, I am going to execute a pre-save pip layout here to show you on my picture in picture, my presenter pod that I have plugged into my matrix mix here on the desk. So when I push my buttons here, you should see my trigger status light up. So as long as I am pressing this one, button five, you can see that it's active. This is what a momentary trigger would look like. I have button six here, button seven, and then eight. So we haven't wired this one into one, two, three, and four. We have this one in five, six, seven, and eight. Now I have a macro here already programmed. You can see um, the one that put the picture in picture up on the top there here. I have it set my video source to input eight, which is the computer you're looking at. And then my picture in picture source is input seven, which is the camera that is pointed at my presenter pod. Now the API is pretty simple. I'm gonna show you the manual really quick here. Uh, this is available on our website and the API for your Matrix Mix or Matrix Pro is going to be at the end. The unit has the exact same API or programming language for Telnet, Serial, and its macro commands. So if you have third-party control integrated, these commands will look very similar to, uh, to everything. Now you're going to have slightly different commands between your Matrix Mix and Matrix Pro, uh, but a couple of them are going to be similar. Camera pan, camera zoom, camera tilt, things like that. Um, so let me show you how to read a preset or a macro here. So you're gonna get along the top, let's do camera preset. You have camera, which is part of the command, and then anything here in the little caret brackets are things that you can pick. Um, we have one through eight, so this is the matrix mix. It has eight cameras, so I can choose camera one through eight. Then the next part of the command is preset, and then I get to choose between recall or store. Uh, recall obviously recalls a preset, and store will store a preset here. Um, 1 through 16, so this would be, hey, I want to recall, let's say preset 3, recall 3. And then I have the option here to add try sync and save CCU. This is if I'm storing a preset. So if I am recalling one, I don't have to add that. So these things here in the brackets are optional. And we have a couple of examples down here of presets, uh, commands in this macro and some explanations. So it should be pretty easy to go through and find the command that you like and program in your macro. If you do write anything wrong, uh, your macro editor will let you know. For example, let's, so if I say do uh, input nine, which there is no input nine, and I test this command, you can see that it failed and syntax error, so it doesn't understand what this means. So I have something typed out wrong. I've got a typo here somewhere, but the second line is okay. So it'll let you know uh, line by line how your commands are going. Uh, another thing that's really cool is if you ever wanna insert a comment, you just use the number symbol or hashtag and you can say, Type in any sort of comment, you know, why you did this, you know, what this view is, that kind of a thing. And as you can see, as it goes through the commands here, it only does the two lines, it lets you know that those are okay, and it ignores this line here. And then you can type another command below that, but if you start a line with this symbol, you won't have, uh, you won't execute it. You can either hide a command you'd already written, or you can just comment your code. Uh, so now that we've got uh, a couple of macros here, I've got one that does uh, recalls a camera preset. Um, camera one moves to preset two, and then your program moves to input two. I've got kind of a fancier one here that moves the camera to a location and it does a really slow pan until it stops and then switches takes again. Um, you know, your commands can be very long. You can have really cool, complicated shots be set up so that you don't have anybody driving it. You just have it automating. Uh, we go over here to the triggers tab and we can assign everything to our trigger. So our hardware triggers, which would be the ones that you know we have connected to that back GPIO in out. 
Uh, this is where we can click on these drop downs and select any macro that we've saved. Um, you have the option to enter, have a macro exit, uh, execute on an enter or an exit command. Um, so this would be, for example, if you have uh, a step view mat and you want when you step on that mat to have camera one move to preset two. And then, you know, when you step off that mat, you want to switch to, uh, you know, a wide view of the classroom on a different camera. You know, I, that would be a macro that I would click here and I could have it be an ex exit command. You can have things have only exit commands. You can have them have enter and exit commands or neither. Uh, another really cool thing that you can do if you'd like is if you ever want to test these, you can turn your test mode on and fire off your triggers here. You can see how they work. If someone's stepping on more than one, you can execute them remotely so you don't have to actually be in the room pressing the hardware triggers, just in the web interface. So that's also a mode you can enter into. So now you're all set to integrate hardware triggers with your AV Bridge Matrix Mix or AV Bridge Matrix Pro system for automation. Go out there and program some really cool macros.